Gravity in Motion, Astronomy with a Physics Connection. You might be wondering why I have a picture of Isaac Newton attached to an apple on this opening slide. Well, a story tells us that one day Isaac Newton was sitting in his garden underneath an apple tree. He was reading some books. All of a sudden, an apple fell off the tree and hit him in the head. Ouch! We're not sure if this story is actually true, but what we do know is the falling apple intrigued Newton. He questioned why objects fall. He eventually figured out the answer to this question, gravity. To understand gravity, we first have to know what a force is. A force is a push or a pull. The picture on the left is showing a push. The picture on the right is showing a pull. Gravity is a type of force, a pull, that attracts all objects in the universe to each other. It does not have to involve contact and is invisible, but everything has it. Newton's law of universal gravitation, one of his many laws, states that every object in the universe attracts every other object. If you're an object having mass, you have gravity and attract other things. Other things are also attracted by you and vice versa. Hmm, if everything in the universe is attracted to everything else, why isn't everything just stuck together in a large clump? Interesting question. The strength of gravity depends on two things the mass of the object. Basically, the more massive something is, the more gravity that it has. For example, you have more gravity than your science notebook because you are more massive. The Earth has more gravity than you because it's more massive than you. The Sun has more gravity than the Earth because it's more massive than the, the Earth. The other factor is distance between objects. Basically, the further apart two things are, the less gravity or attraction they have with each other. The closer things are, the more attraction or more gravity they have between each other. Question to consider. What is the difference between mass and weight? Let's start with mass. Mass is the amount of matter or particles that take up space in an object. Your mass cannot change depending on your location. Your mass on Earth would be the same that it is on the Moon, the Sun, Jupiter, anywhere in the universe. The only way to change your mass would be to actually take away or add particles that make up your body. You couldn't just do it by changing your location. However, your weight is a different story. Your weight can change depending on where you are because weight is affected by gravity. Weight is the force of gravity pulling on an object. This leads us to why we weigh less on the moon. The moon is less massive than the earth and therefore has less gravity. As a matter of fact, the moon is about one-sixth of the earth's gravity, therefore you would weigh about one-sixth on the moon. If you were to step on a scale on the earth and the scale read 60 pounds, if you stepped on that same scale on the moon, you would only weigh 10 pounds. Basically, 10 pounds is one-sixth of 60. Your mass would not change, however, and you would look exactly the same only your weight on the scale would be different. If you're looking for a quick way to lose weight, the best thing to do would be go to the smallest object in the universe. Unfortunately, you would look exactly the same and not be any healthier. Your weight would just be less on the scale. Here's some more questions to investigate or consider. We've been talking about how the planets keep going around the sun and how the moon keeps going around the earth, but why does this keep happening? Well, the reason why the planets go around the sun and the moon goes around the earth is gravity and something called inertia. We've already learned about gravity. That's the invisible force that attracts everything to everything else. But inertia is a little different. Newton also had a first law of motion. This first law basically stated that an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by another force. Basically, things want to keep doing what they're doing. If an object's moving, it wants to keep moving. If an object's still, it wants to stay still. It will keep doing those things unless something else interrupts it. The interruption would be another force. Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia. Let's go to this diagram to understand this a little bit more. What I have here is a diagram of the moon and Earth. Now, we already know that the moon goes around the Earth. What I have here is basically the orbit pattern that it follows going around the Earth. It takes about a month to do this. Now, there's two reasons why the moon keeps going around the Earth. 
One reason is this pull of gravity. The moon and the earth both have gravity. The earth is larger, so its pull is greater. It's almost like a tug of war game that the earth is winning. The moon pulls a little bit at the earth, but the earth pulls much more and controls the moon because of this gravity. However, if the gravity was the only thing involved, the moon would crash into the earth, which it does not. There's another force involved called inertia. Inertia is the arrow going this way. The moon is flying through space and wants to keep flying through space in this direction. However, the earth does not allow this to happen because of the gravity. The moon wants to keep going, the earth wants the moon to come to it. Therefore, these two reach a compromise, which is this middle path, which results in the orbit. Without gravity and inertia, we would not have this orbit pattern that continues over and over again. Let's put it this way. If inertia was gone, the moon would slam into the earth because gravity would be the only thing there. If gravity was gone, the moon would keep flying through space and we never see it again. Gravity and inertia work together to make this repeated orbit pattern.